everyone my name is Vinny Sethi I hope you all are staying healthy today we are going to talk about Keynesian theory of income output and employment determination according to this theory we can determine income output and employment with the help of effective demand that means entire theory is based on effective demand what do you mean by effective demand effective demand is a point where aggregate demand function is equal to aggregate supply function Effective demand is a point where aggregate demand function is equal to the aggregate supply function. Aggregate demand function also known as aggregate demand price and aggregate supply function also known as aggregate supply price. First of all, we are going to talk about aggregate demand price or we can say the aggregate demand function. Aggregate demand price is total amount of money that firm expect to receive from the sale of output that is produced by a specific number of workers. Please listen carefully. Aggregate demand price is total amount of money that firm expect to receive from the sale of output that is produced by a specific number of workers. And whatever amount firm expect to receive all depend on consumer willingness to pay for company product. For example, there are 100 workers and they are producing 1000 unit and firm expect to receive from the sale of 1000 unit is equal to 50,000. This 50,000 will be called aggregate demand price. As aggregate demand price will increase, obviously output will also increase because this is more profitable for firm. As output increase, employment increase. As employment increase, eventually income will also increase. In this diagram, you can see on x-axis we have employment and y-axis we have aggregate demand price or we can say the aggregate demand function. Here you can see as aggregate demand price increase from P to P1, employment also increase from E to E1. So we can say there is a direct relation between employment and aggregate demand price. And this curve will be called aggregate demand function curve. Now we are going to talk about aggregate supply price or we can say the aggregate supply function. Aggregate supply price is total amount of money that firm must be received from the sale of output that is produced by a specific number of workers. Aggregate supply price is total amount of money that firm must be received from the sale of output that is produced by a specific number of workers. Why firm must receive this amount of money? Because if firm will not receive this amount of money, then it will not able to get its wages cost. For example, there are 100 workers and they are producing 1000 unit. Wages cost of this 100 workers is equal to 35,000. From the sale of 1000 unit, firm must be received 35,000. Otherwise, firm will not able to get its wages cost. So we can say that aggregate supply price is total amount of money that firm must be received from the sale of output which is produced by specific number of workers. Otherwise, the firm will not able to get wages cost of these workers. And aggregate supply price and employment have a direct relation. As aggregate supply price will increase, obviously output increase. Output increase, employment increase. As employment increase, eventually national income will also increase. In this diagram, you can see on X axis we have employment and Y axis we have aggregate supply price. As aggregate supply price increase, employment also increase. But after E point, uh, only aggregate supply price will increase, uh, employment will not increase. But why? Because E is a full employment point. After this point, we cannot increase employment in economy. As you know, entire theory depends on effective demand. And effective demand is a point of equilibrium where aggregate demand function is equal to aggregate supply function. In this diagram, you can see on x-axis we have employment and y-axis we have aggregate supply price and aggregate demand price. ADF is aggregate demand function, ASF is aggregate supply function. At this E point, aggregate demand function is equal to aggregate supply function. That's why this E will be called effective demand point. E is effective demand point, not full employment point. Full employment point is E1. At this E point, you can see still N and N1 workers are unemployed. Means at E point, still we have unemployment in economy because full employment point is E1. That's why we need to increase in aggregate demand. And aggregate demand depends on consumption and investment. This theory based on short time period. At short time period, we cannot increase consumption. That's why we need to increase in investment. 
initially private sector will not invest because there is no scope of profit that's why initially government will invest in economy as government will invest in economy aggregate demand will increase as a result aggregate demand curve shift forward shift forward from edf to edf1 and eventually we will reach at this full employment point e1 because as aggregate demand increase obviously investment will also increase as investment increase output increase output increase uh, eventually employment will also increase and we reach at this full employment point e1 so this is all about keynesian theory of income output and employment determination i think you got it and thank you so much for watching this video bye take care